This presentation will provide advice for routine HPLC analysis. Here, I'll be talking about problems with abnormal peak shapes, particularly the impact of column degradation. As shown at the bottom of this slide, peak splitting, in which one peak splits into two or more peaks, and broadening, in which the peak becomes wider, distorted, and asymmetric, are commonly known as abnormal peak shape. These are the most likely causes for abnormal peak shape. I will talk about countermeasures for these while showing respective examples. This slide summarizes common symptoms and causes of degradation in column performance that will result in a loss of resolution, increased pressure, or both. If abnormal changes in peak shape, retention time and separation selectivity are observed, or if in other words, the number of theoretical plates is decreased, the separation of the analytes of interest may no longer be satisfactory. There are three possible causes, loss of the stationary phase, degradation of the packing material or changes to the stationary phase chemistry. When a column is degraded, in addition to the abnormal peak shape, an increased column pressure is often observed. Increased column pressure is not directly related to abnormal peak shape, but is also a common problem, so it is described here. It is essential to follow the precautions listed here to avoid common causes of column degradation as shown in the previous slide and ensure long column lifetime and stable performance. As you may already know, it is important to increase the flow rate gradually when starting mobile phase delivery to avoid sudden pressure increase. Similarly, sudden pressure drop may seriously damage the analytical column as well. If you intend to open the drain valve after stopping the mobile phase delivery, you should wait until the remaining system pressure drops close to zero before doing so, to avoid risk of column deterioration. Now, how can we objectively determine the degree of degradation of a column, rather than using qualitative observations like the peaks are wider? One indicator is the theoretical number of plates, which expresses the degree of dispersion of the sample band within the HPLC system. The idea is that if a sample is retained in a column for a long period, it surely disperses and spreads, so a column that can provide a sharp peak even after a long retention is considered to be a good column. Ideally, a peak is recorded as a symmetrical Gaussian bell-shaped curve. Retention time is used as an index of how long a peak stays in the column. An index of peak sharpness is half of the peak width at the inflection point where the curve undulates in an S shape, and this width is called the sigma or standard deviation. In the definition formula on the right, retention time is used as the numerator and sigma, the peak width, as the denominator. When the peak is sharp even after a long retention, the theoretical plate number will be large. In addition, the equations below the definition formula are all mathematically equivalent to the definition formula. But it is transformed to be easy to calculate from measurements using a ruler or values from a data processing device due to the difficulty of measuring sigma value correctly. Using the theoretical plate number allows for quantitative evaluation of the column performance. For example, a measurement of 10,000 plates for a caffeine peak under certain analytical conditions when the column is brand new, and 7,000 plates after one year of use shows a certain degree of degradation over time. In addition to the general concerns about column handling introduced in the previous slide, protective columns are sometimes used to delay the degradation of the analytical column. There are two types of protective columns. A pre-column protects the analytical column from impurities in the mobile phase, while a guard column protects the analytical column from impurities in the sample solution. The pre-column is placed between the pump and the sample injector, as shown here. This flow diagram is for isocratic elution, but for gradient elution, it is generally placed between each pump and the mixer to ensure no added gradient delay volume. Since the sample does not pass through the column, there is no need to consider band diffusion in the column, so relatively large column sizes are generally selected with an emphasis on its capacity to retain impurities. There is also no necessity to use the same type of column as the analytical column. In contrast, a guard column is installed between the sample injector and the analytical column. It is generally placed inside the column oven. Of course, the sample passes through the guard column and interacts with its packing material before being introduced into the analytical column. 
It is easier to understand the function of a guard column if it is considered as a detachable part of an analytical column, fixed at the column inlet where the packing material tends to deteriorate. Therefore, the guard column generally contains the same type of packing material as the analytical column of the same or smaller inner diameter and is shorter in length than the analytical column. As shown here, there are two possible examples for column cleaning. One is to use a mobile face with a significant diluting power to remove compounds that are strongly retained in the column. The other one is to utilize a secondary interaction to remove compounds adsorbed on the packing material. In the former case, a mobile face with a large organic solvent ratio for reversed phase columns or a mobile face with a large salt concentration for ion exchange columns is commonly used. In the latter case, when the basic compound is adsorbed by secondary electrostatic interaction in reversed phase mode, an acidic mobile phase containing sodium perchlorate can effectively remove the basic compound. When the secondary interaction is hydrophobic interaction in ion exchange mode, the adsorbed hydrophobic compound can be washed by adding appropriate organic solvent into the mobile phase. In any of these cases, the theoretically effective mobile phase may exceed the allowable range for practical use with the analytical column, so be sure to check the column instruction manual to confirm the specifications. The next session will look at abnormal peak shape caused by the sample solvent, the mobile phase, the column temperature, and the detector response. Thank you for your attention.